Well, it says we're live. It's Tuesday. It's uh, four o'clock Pacific, six o'clock Central in Chicago, seven o'clock in New York, six o'clock here in Costa Rica, midnight in Dublin, 1 a.m. in Italy, 8.30 and 9.30 a.m. Wednesday morning in Australia, and it's Facebook Live. And here we go. <laughs> How exciting. With I'm with my good friend, Dr. Mata Sani Dow. And we're here to talk today to you about health care, especially for children. And uh, uh, we met, uh, oh my gosh, four, five, six years ago, maybe, and just hit it off right away. And um, Dr. Sadie is a wonderful functional medicine practitioner that's focusing on kids. And she has a new book out, which is just fabulous. Yes, there it is. Yes. Yeah. So tell us about the book first. Tell us what, what was the goal in writing the book? Oh my gosh. You know, thank you so much for having me on. This is an absolute honor. I'm so excited. So if you can't tell, like it's bubbling up inside of me at the gratitude. I'm so thankful. <laughs> So, you know, with being a functional medicine practitioner, being a family physician, seeing children and adults of all ages and demographics, chronic disease is on a rise and it's just getting worse and worse to the point where, you know, all of these, I mean, if we continue at the current trajectory, one in every four children will have autism by 2033. And that's if we continue at the annual growth rate of 13% and last year it was like 14%. So it's getting, we're, we're getting sicker and sicker as wait, a humanity. Wait, 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 wait. Can, can we just absorb <laughs> that one fact? I mean, there are so many facts that are shocking to all of us that it's easy to go right past the numbers, you know, and mm -hmm. one out of four children by what year? 2033. 20, 30. I study out in MIT, yes. So that's in 13 years. If it continues advancing just at the same pace that it's currently advancing and not getting worse. And, but it is getting worse. And that's what's crazy. Yes. Is that our children are getting sicker. We're getting sicker. Currently, it's one in every, one every second child has a chronic illness. And again, in five years, they say eight out of every 10 children will have a chronic health condition. So this is just getting worse and worse and worse and it's affecting us, it's affecting our children, it's affecting our planet. So especially with everybody talking about, you know, there's a lot of practitioners talking to adults. We need to now bring our children to the spotlight. And I'm like, and that's where I'm like, you know what, especially with the quarantine and everybody at home, guess what? Now my kids were at my disposal 24 <laughs> seven. So we, we, we actually put together the book ourselves together because they are I've been educating them as soon as I learn about something I'm like you guys and I and I have to like say my thanks to you specifically when I right after residency I you know joined this medical practice where under you know under one roof there's me and OBGYN and internist and exercise physiologist nutrition counseling chiropractor but really I had to learn all this nutrition stuff and that's when I dove into the gluten summit and that's when it blew my mind. I'm like, wait, they're not, they're not, what? They don't teach us this in medical school. And so incorporating that, I think one of the biggest first stepping stones that I had right after residency. And then at, at that moment, I literally dumped it at that moment and started learning and educating and, you know, educating my, uh, my, my patients and then working alongside my children and my family to incorporate all these healthy tips that we've all learned into their lifestyle. And this quarantine really gave me a time to really now take this out to the world. So what I've been educating my children on, I've been able to, you know, you know, bring out to the world. So it's been really exciting. So thank you so much for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's really great. Um, one of the things we do is I do shout outs. So let me do a couple of shout outs here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cindy uh, was Cindy Foley was here first from Pennsylvania today. Hi, Cindy. Thanks so much. And we've got Dorada's from New York. Hi, Dorada. Steph's here from Missouri. Uh, uh, Maggie has a question. Um, really, really go, Maggie. This is like a two hour answer. What is causing the increase in autism? 
Wow. Yeah, that's that is a two hour answer. So but, um, um, I'll start if I may. Please. Um, what I've been talking about, and then um, ask you for your views also, um, Maggie. I've talked about this a lot. That uh, uh, it's two. The journal Pediatrics, arguably the number one journal in the English language for children's health, they published a, a policy statement, which means. It wasn't just an article by a doctor, but rather this was from the board of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Mm -hmm. And they said that uh, the Toxic Substance Control Act, which controls and regulates the introduction of new chemicals into our environment uh, in the United States, the Toxic Substance Control Act failed miserably to protect our children, that's their language. And then in parentheses, they said, and adults, but they're really talking about the kids. And we've heard the studies that, uh, depending on the study you read, uh, 200 to 280 chemicals are in the umbilical cord blood at birth, that our children are being exposed to this toxic cesspool of chemicals in their bloodstream in utero. And we have no defense mechanism against any of this. And you know, 247 pounds per person per day are being manufactured or imported in the United States of chemicals, 247 pounds. This is in the journal Pediatrics. That's five 50 pound bags per person per day. And, and these newborn kids, they have all these chemicals. Many of them are neurotoxins or brain toxins. I'll give you one example of this, and then I'll pass it over to our guest, Dr. Saeed. But in Chicago, they published a study, 346 pregnant women, they did urine tests on them in the eighth month of pregnancy, and they measured the number of phthalates, which are chemicals used to mold plastic. And they only measured five phthalates, there are hundreds, but they measured five, including BPA, the very common chemical we hear about in plastic water bottles and many other places. They categorized the results of these urine tests into fourths, the lowest fourth, the next, the third, and the highest fourth. They followed these children of these pregnancies, the offspring for seven years. And when the kids turned seven years old, they did Wexler IQ tests on them, the official IQ test. Now, I'm sure Dr. Saeed will agree, there's not much in medicine that's all or every, but this was every. Every child whose mother was in the highest quartile of phthalates and urine in pregnancy compared to the children in the lowest quartile of phthalates and urine in pregnancy, every child in the highest quartile, their IQ was seven points lower, 6.7 to 7.4 points lower. Every one of them. Now, that doesn't mean anything to anyone until you understand a one point difference in IQ is noticeable. A seven point difference in IQ is the difference between a child working really hard, getting straight A's, and a child working really hard, getting straight C's. That this kid doesn't have a chance in hell of ever doing well because their brain never developed properly, because mom was high in phthalates. Just Google phthalates, P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S, phthalates and neurogenesis, nerve growth. Here come the studies, how phthalates inhibit the brain from developing properly. So what this means is that our moms are walking cesspools, excuse me, before they get pregnant. They're walking cess, and they don't know that they've been exposed to all these chemicals like never before in history and they've never heard of detoxing and don't realize that detoxification support has to be a part of your everyday life now, not just one week a year, but every day because there's so many chemicals we're exposed to. So this is like a weekend course answer just to get a big picture view, but that's the basic reason why autism's going through the roof. And I always say this, and it's a bit abrasive, but I say, don't ever say, vaccines cause autism. You sound like a nutcase, because if they did, every child would get autism from vaccines. 
That doesn't happen. But it's legitimate to say vaccines may take the child over the edge of toxicity Absolutely. and then contribute to the development of autism. And there's lots of studies for that because the child's already so polluted just by being born into this world that they've come into. That's, that's the big picture view. Dr. Saeed, can you, can I tag team with you like a wrestling match? Yes! I'm gonna tag you. <laughs> yes, honestly, because we are living in a world filled with toxic and it's all about that toxic load that builds up over time. And all of these symptoms are just basically like help, our body saying help, help, help. There's something going on in these children and these families that something's off balance. Our body is just dysregulated and we need to now put our bodies back into balance. And it's all of this increased toxic load from the toxins in our environment to the toxins we're putting in our mouths to the, you know, the genetically modified foods and all those toxins that come on board. And then you know, the environmental toxins and then lack of nature and lack of sleep and lack of, you know, the stress that's, that we're all dealing with now. I mean, it's just one thing after another, after another, and you're absolutely right. We as moms are sicker, and so we're raising sicker children. Yeah. You know, And that's where we need to now start taking care of ourselves because the sicker we are, the sicker our children are, and it's just gonna get worse from here on out because that toxic load just continues to build. You know, when, so, Dr. When, when Dr. Saeed and I go to a weekend seminar, um, to teach, uh, we sit in the audience and listen to um, the other speakers. And it would take an entire weekend course, at least 10 hours of lectures, five and five, six, you know, 10, 12 hours of lectures for the doctors who come to this weekend symposium to get the big picture view of how overwhelming the amount of environmental toxins we're exposed to is. It's overwhelming. Um, and doctors don't know any of this. Some do now because they're getting some exposure. But that's why in my most recent book, You Can Fix Your Brain, the subtitle is just one hour a week to the best memory, productivity, and sleep you've ever had. Because this is overwhelming. And you don't know what to do with all this information. So if you take just one hour a week to learn one more thing, like uh, replacing the Tupperware containers with glass containers, that's big because the Tupperware containers, the plastic containers leach phthalates into the food when it's in the refrigerator overnight. So next day you eat chicken, it's got phthalates in it. You know, the lids on coffee cups, the steam from the hot coffee condenses on the other side of the lid, drips back down to the coffee with bisphenol A. You put the coffee cup up to your lips, the hot liquid hits the other side of the lid, tapers down into the opening full of bisphenol A. And these things just accumulate that we're exposed to. So there's so much to learn. So one week, you're gonna take an hour, you're gonna go to the URLs in the book, you're gonna see the three URLs for glass storage containers. You go to mileskimble.com, Amazon, and whatever the third one is, you're going to order like glass storage containers. And you're going to pay the credit card, hit send, you're done. It took an hour. You're done for the week. Next week, you do one more thing. Dr. C, do you have that same kind of base hit concept in your book, in your children's book? Absolutely. It is. You just have to layer it in. And that's what I've done with this children's book and with all my families that I deal with. Start slow, just start somewhere. <laughs> and I've done this with the children's book where I've done, actually I put it in the back of the book where we've actually gone through and done like, like Adam's Healing Adventure Gems and every day you can incorporate some itty bitty thing into your daily, in, into your daily routine that can optimize your overall health and wellness optimize your gut bacteria, optimize, lower insulin resistance, optimize your mitochondria. So all of that just by incorporating these simple things. And great, start with the kitchen. I mean, we're in the kitchen all day long, right? <laughs> Most, especially as moms, sometimes it feels like that. So start with simple things, even in the kitchen, just, just like what you said, Dr. Tom, remove getting rid of all the plastics and just one thing at a time. Yeah, just one thing at a time, once a week, every Tuesday night after dinner, 
every Sunday morning after service, you know, whenever it is, but just one hour a week. That way you don't get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And in six months, you've changed the lifestyle for you and your family. Absolutely. And for me in my house, every time something, you know, I run out of a detergent, I make sure that I have a cleaner detergent, a green detergent, organic detergent to replace it. So it can be as easy as, oh, I'm out of this. So let's go ahead and buy it. Now let's go look for a greener one, greener right. alternative. Right. And simple things like that. Actually, when I do this, I, I go shopping with my kids and we read the ingredients out of even, even just like what we read the ingredients with food labels, we start reading the ingredients of these, uh, of everything that we're putting on our body, in our body, you know, all these, of these detergents and these chemicals for, you know, soaps and laundry detergents even. So actually I make it a huge, like make it a learning experience. So then the kids also understand that. And that's what I've done in my own house is every time something, you know, we go take, I take everybody shopping and I'm like, okay, let's, what do we need you guys? Oh, let's try to find the cleanest version here by reading the labels. Marvelous. And that's what we've done with the kids all from the very beginning. And, and if, if they can do it to so make it a fun activity to do with your family. And is, is that the kind of message that's in your children's book? Absolutely. And that's what's so powerful. It's so much fun because it's all about um, uh, Adam. Um, and he actually has lots of chronic health conditions. He's not feeling so hot, but instead of, um, he asks his friend, he goes, you know, I was not feeling so great. What, do I, what am I going to do? He's like, you know what? I also dealt with eczema and allergies and all these chronic health conditions. And my doctor told me that I just have to put my body back into balance. That these, uh, these symptoms that I'm experiencing are just a call out for help from the body. And that just to say that we're just getting closer to the toxic load you know, we're overboard, overboard. We got to think about what we're doing with our lifestyles. And just by incorporating these simple tips and we start with, you know, gratitude every single morning. And that's what I do with my kids. And then we incorporate the healthy foods and the microbiome and eating the rainbow and then toxic, you know, exposures and how to limit that. So all of these key pieces and to, because then, you know, because kids can understand this stuff, you know, being as natural as possible. Here she is, no chemicals, right? Yeah. <laughs> Using yeah. all natural detergents. And just by incorporating that, you can lower the overall inflammation, help your body heal itself by optimizing the mitochondria and all cellular functions to really optimize health and well being. And that, those are just simple things that anybody can do. And that's what I really wanted to empower people that. These are what Dr. Tom and I are talking about are not complicated things. They're really simple things. And anybody can start that today. Yeah. And even your kids mm -hmm. can start this. The, the youngest, as young and as old. So anybody can start this. And it's a lot of fun too along that way. I think, um, I think the path to success in doing this is to be kind to yourself and to be Absolutely. patient. You know, that's why the one hour a week thing is you're just not pushing yourself to try to get everything done right now, no. right? And in six months, you've really, you've really done a lot. So a couple more Absolutely. shout outs here. Yeah. If I may. Yay. Let's see. <laughs> Love it. Yes, yes. It says, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, my team says, don't forget to comment with your questions. Okay, good. So <laughs> it's causing the increase on, right? Marty says, hello from Austin. Maggie's in Cleveland. Cat's in Kentucky. Shelly's in Louisiana. Dr. Tom, can you do a Facebook Live on detoxing before pregnancy? You know, there's been a lot of questions about that, Debbie. So we actually are doing a detox thing. Um, it's almost ready to announce. I don't know if it is or not. Um, if it is, our staff will announce it here. They'll put a link in there or something. If not, next week, we'll talk about that. Uh, Cindy says, so sad. Yeah, you're, you're right, Cindy, about our the toxicity of our environment. That's the world that we're living in now. You know, you, you, you know, we can't ignore this. Uh, that's just, that's the world that we're in. Mm -hmm. Mia's here from North Wales. Patricia says, a gas. Yes, detoxify daily. So the first thing about detoxifying, folks, is you have to have a highway to get rid of the crud that's in your body. Mm -hmm. And that highway is called hydration. Mm -hmm. You have to be well hydrated, which means a third to a half ounce of water per pound body weight, like we both have right here, right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a great model. A third to a half ounce 
per pound body weight, which means if you weigh 120 pounds, that would be uh, 40 to 60 ounces of water a day. That's five to eight, eight ounce glasses a day. Oh my God, I'll be peeing all day. Well, that's the plan. <laughs> that's, that's the plan. That's, that's how you get it out. <laughs> you gotta get this stuff out, right, right. So that's always first and most important is to do that. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, in my house, what we've done is, especially for the kids, we've actually taken little jars um, of, and then they're all marked jars. So like, you know, spaghetti sauce jars, all these jars that have like 25 ounces per person. Yes, that's exactly what I've done. And every day I fill this for the kids and they know they have to finish it. And that's simple. And that, that way I don't have to, you know, spend time extra washing extra glasses so therefore everything is in one and they, I know how much they're drinking so simple yeah. ways to detoxify exactly <laughs> exactly uh Cindy says love the book it has educated me in so many ways thanks Dr. Tom thank you Cindy I'm yeah. always a label reader she says Marilyn's watching and John Marilyn and John McDonald hello guys can you write the name of this vital book in the comments please so uh Dr. Sayi, can you um, hold the book up, the cover up to the, uh, uh, let's see, there it is. Can you say something then? Yeah, so this is Adam's Healing Adventure from Sickness to Health. This is actually the first in its series. The one that I'm currently working on right now, um, and I have another one coming up. It's, it's um, the power, the healing power of rainbow foods. So I'm hoping to make this an entire series for your kids. So again, super powerful. And we could do this for our future generation. Is this available on, on uh, Amazon? Amazon, absolutely. Great, great. Glad to hear that. Um, Sharon says, cannot send you a message, will not post. Also tried to make a comment on the meeting just now and won't post. Sorry, Sharon, don't know why, but I'm reading your message. So send your question here, whatever it is. This great, this book would be great for kids, for adults, not just kids. Clean living for dummies. Way to go, Maggie. Yep, that's right. That's right. I love it. <laughs> Here from Virginia. Uh, uh, Jana says, I love you both so much. Thank you, Power Duo. Thank you, Jana. Love you. I love you. Hey. Love you. <laughs> Mouse says, greetings from Santa Monica. Uh, Jay Esther's in California. And the list goes. And uh, my team's just posted the link for the book. Glad it's there. Maggie says, is BPA-free plastic okay? Unfortunately not. Uh, they've just replaced BPA with BPS and BPG, which is more toxic. But it'll take years before public knowledge is enough to scream and they change it. But plastic is just not acceptable with any foods. I think there are place to, places where we can use up all of the plastic we've got, like the stand here for my light uh, behind the screen is got a bunch of plastic parts on it, like a camera, that's plastic. That can be recycled plastic if need be, but we don't need more plastic in our world. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 Catriona asks, will you take this to schools? Would be a great thing to do. So far, we're working on that currently. Great. And uh, actually, it's only in, yeah, it's, in, it's been in some schools already. So this is really exciting to take great, this to the next great. level. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to, love to support a national program of this. No, I'm done. And then, you know, I've done this with my kids and it's not just this book. I've actually started a podcast too. It's called the Holistic Kids Show Podcast where my 12 year old and my nine year old are like two weeks ago, they interviewed Dr. Terry Walls and educated them so can't wait to have you on it Dr. Tom but my we're my kids so I'm hoping that we're going to create this revolution of kids educating kids starting yeah. from the very young you know yeah excellent I'm it's happy to support that that would be great that would be <laughs> it's so much fun when you have like a 12 year old and nine year old talk about NF Kappa B and you know how it how all these foods are influencing our genetic code and I was like oh okay this is amazing <laughs> that's really great Again, we're going to start this movement and Thank you so much. I'm so honored that you're on this. Team. <laughs> this is an area that is so needed and no one's ever done this before. So your energy and your passion focused here can have a huge impact in the world. Just a huge. Absolutely. So everyone out there, let me ask everyone out there, please tonight 
um, when this interview is over or during, if you can multitask, buy the book and write, you know, what's it like 10 bucks, 12 bucks, buy the book to support it, uh, you know, and give it as a gift to someone that's got little kids. If you don't have little kids, but just put a few bucks behind supporting this movement and then write some comments on Amazon. You know, there's there's a comment section for books and just say what this means and how, oh, this might really help to change the world. Thank you so much. What a great book. You know, whatever you want to say, but put this much effort up. Remember base hits win the ball game? You do this much of a base hit for Dr. Saeed's book, the result will be the momentum will pick up in this book and Amazon, they watch all of that, right? And the more comments they get, the more five stars, the more that book goes up. That's why you, you Can Fix Your Brain was number one in seven categories on Amazon. That's why is because of all the comments that came. So please um, put a little bit of effort, you know, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, whatever it is, buy the book and put some nice comments behind it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we got to create this movement because every child can create that ripple effect to change this world inside and out. And it's this future that we really need to now start to educate and empower. Um, and so we can't wait. Yeah, I'm Amen. so excited. <laughs> uh, William has a question. <clears throat> what about all the water filters that have plastic? Is there a better option? That's really a good question, William. And yes, there is. Uh, some water filtration systems will use copper wiring in them, but it's more expensive, obviously. Copper is more expensive than plastic, uh, and you get what you pay for, right? Uh, but it's going to be the demand, the general demand of all of us, less plastic touching our food and our water, less plastic, less plastic. When, and then the manufacturers will be competitive to make more products with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, just a minute. Marzi just gave me a note. Mm -hmm. Oh, to ask you about your son's project. Oh, yeah. No, it was just the Holistic Kids show. Oh, and right. then so we started the Holistic Kids show, but actually all of them are now working. So every every other week we actually interview a top celebrity in functional medicine. And I know, I mean, if there's been such great interest right now i'm only scheduled six months out but if i scheduled everybody that wanted to be scheduled i'm actually booked out to 2022 and the kids are it, and they take full center stage my 12 year old and my nine year old take full center stage i'm not even there wow. they interview the guest and um, the expert and 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 bring it down to their level with their funny expressions and their <laughs> entertaining questions that the only kids can ask oh great because they live this lifestyle you know, we live 100% non-GMO, we live 100% gluten-free, actually more paleo and keto green for me. And so this is the kind of lifestyle they live. And I feed a family of eight on a daily basis. And on the weekends, it goes to 20. Thank God for COVID has decreased it a little bit. But this is the way that we practice. This is the way we live. And so then this, they're able to now reciprocate, bring that out to the world and help educate kids. And actually, they're, they're working on the second one with me. Um, this next one. So all of these books they have done with me. And so this oh, is a great project that through this quarantine time um, has really brought the kids to really have time now to really educate other kids. So oh, it's been a lot of fun. There's a question from Patricia. What's the name of the children's podcast? So The Holistic Kids Show. All right. And is, is that with an H, holistic or? Holistic, w? H. Hey, Holistic right. Kids Show podcast. Right. Right. And then they do like cooking demonstrations. My five-year-old will talk about the gut microbiome. <laughs> it's been, this is what I'm super passionate about, really educating our youth. And so you can see it in real live action. <laughs> really critically important. So any of you out there that have contacts with educators that can make a change in the world, like if you have someone that's high up in the Montessori organization or in another education system that um, watch, watch the podcast, see if it resonates with you and what these kids are doing, and then reach out to Dr. Saeed and get her kids connected with the Montessori International Network. 
Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And you know, because this doesn't stop here. I'm working actually, I'm putting a family health expo together. I actually was, you know, it was supposed to be Latin next year last year, but this all went crazy. Actually, yeah, 20 in September. It was supposed to be in September. But so many more resources coming up. I want to get your kids involved. We got to start creating this movement and it really starts with our homes. With yeah. these simple steps that Dr. Tom talked about right at the beginning, one hour a day, one hour a week, one hour a week, <laughs> super easy. Just anything, yeah. just one step in the right direction to educate and empower our children in our future. Catriona is asking, is this online or on TV? So the podcast is on iTunes. So anywhere where you listen to your iTunes. Mm -hmm. Good, good. But they good. were on TV. They were on the Dr. Nandy show. They were educating the world about meditation and mindfulness and gratitude. Oh, <laughs> so that, really that's great. actually is going to come up soon. Marvelous, marvelous. <laughs> and um, uh, someone said, uh, um, I need to teach, uh, it was Jane, Jane Bradley. I need to teach my grandchildren about the dangers of sugar. Can you write that book next? Yes, <laughs> that will be my next one. So yeah. I was going to take it to the rainbow foods first because I'm always about positivity and all the foods you can eat and like look at all these colors and you know because when you start adding all those rainbow foods and all those phytonutrients and you talk about the healing powder of all these different colors in a child's diet then you sort of like you know crowd out the sugar and the artificial stuff so that's why I wanted to bring this one to fruition first and then we'll talk about all the stuff that they can eat. That's marvelous. That's that's really great approach. Really great approach. Um, Maggie says, "Let's get it on PBS." Yes. Right. Yes. Let's do it, Doctor Tom. Me and you. Let's do it. <laughs> that's a great idea. Well, it's actually your kids will be on PBS. Yes. Oh, that would be oh, so amazing. Yes. Yeah, that's that would be a game changer. And your grandkids? We got to get grandkids? Everybody. And my grandkids, yes, and my grandkids. Why That's not? Because these are kids that are have been listening to this from some from the very beginning, right? And so they understand this. This is their lingo. They understand what you know what yes. this is all about and the importance of it. And those are the yes. kids that can really take it to the next. Yes, next yes. Next. yes. That's just marvelous. Uh, Helen says sugar, wheat, and gluten awareness. Yeah, that's really great, Helen. That, Absolutely. That, wonderful news to educate parents and children. I hope it reaches the educators too. Yes, uh, we do too. We do too, Helen. And any of you out there that have educators that are in the administrative end of things and uh, have the power to turn some wheels, um, introduce them to this concept. Because these kids, Dr. Saeed's kids, are getting experience at wearing a headset and talking <laughs> and just explaining things, you know, and they're, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this podcast. <laughs> it's actually visual too. So then we, we actually stream it on Facebook live and then my team converts it to podcast. So it's amazing. So you get to see what all their crazy. Oh, how marvelous. It's Absolutely so much marvelous. fun. It's so much really, fun. Really, really marvelous. <laughs> That's just great. So when, um, when a parent wants to change the direction of their kid's health, Mm -hmm. and they come to you and their child's got asthma. Mm -hmm. Where where do you start? How, how do you begin with someone? I always start with one, I mean, obviously history, labs, like all those things are a side note, but specifically to create change, education is key. Because to educate, when you educate a child about exactly what happens to their body and why, I mean, no child, really wants to damage this body. But when you tell them that, you know, the, the foods that you're eating, the bad foods are actually killing the gut microbiome, the, the good friends in our gut, it, they're killing those bugs and they're getting replaced by these bad bugs that aren't doing the job well. So they let things through that should not be getting through where 70 to 80% of your immune system lies in the gut. So it goes, it has enough army and attacks it. And now you have immune complexes that go all over the body. That, they're like, oh no, there's a war in my body that's causing my asthma. We got to make sure, no, I want to now feed the good guys. I want to feed the good people that will keep my immune system healthy and strong. So just by starting with these key basics and educating these children about the food that they're putting in their bodies can either help them or hurt them. That's really that The decisions that they make every day can either help them or hurt them. Stress management, you know, educating them 
about the power of gratitude every single day. We're living in a world right now filled with fear. Our kids are growing up in a world with more stress than we've ever dealt with before. And, uh, you know, bringing them up in a world of gratitude and positivity, and then also incorporating the stress management techniques, and then educating them about all of these key foundational pieces is really where I start. And then I'm like, okay, I know that at first I educate them. I'm like, but what can we start with today? And if it's overwhelming for, for the child, yeah. they're like, oh no, it's too much. I can't get rid of that. I'm like, okay, let's just start with gratitude today. <laughs> And just like with simple things, we don't know that, that's, that's easy. I mean, in my house, we wake up every morning and we sing the thankful song. Thank you for my eyes. Thank you for my ears. Thank you for another beautiful day to change the world. So I give them purpose. <laughs> so we, that's what we do. So we focus on gratitude. And then we slowly then incorporate those pieces that they're ready to incorporate. Because sometimes, I mean, especially with the foods that we're eating, with the lack of mindful meditation, the lack of nature, you know, where there's two main pieces of our decision-making, right? Our prefrontal cortex and our amygdala. And right now our kids are really, our, our amygdalas have been, I mean, we're, we, we, our decision-making has been hijacked and our, we're thinking with our amygdalas, this fight and flight type of responses. So if we can start to build those connections between our prefrontal cortex and our amygdala by slowly introducing one step at a time, um, just by gratitude. Now, the next time they come back to me, they're like, oh yeah, now I can. And now those connections are developing between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. And they're like, now I can take on the next thing that I can do. And so educating them about what they can do and provi providing them with alternatives. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, gluten, take away gluten. But they're like, oh my God, no, what am I going to do with my cakes and my cookies and my pastries? And I know every time you go to come to Chicago, I'm always trying to bring like food because I love to bake. Like that's the way that I show love is through my cooking. So um, I do, I do cookie, you can do cookies and cakes and you do all these different things with it. And that then brings down the guard that was up. They're like, what? You can live this lifestyle without, you know, compromising on our taste and we can still have fun stuff once in a while. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in my house, we go through vegetables, clean protein, healthy fats. That's the list. And that's what I educate these children on, that it doesn't, don't talk about the things that you can't eat. Let's talk about the things you can eat. Yes. yes. Go down the list. So in my house, it's really funny. So even if they go to rest, restaurants or if they go to outdoor gatherings, they're like, mama, I went through my vegetables, my clean protein, my healthy fat, not going to have my carbohydrates, which is like, you know, a piece of fruit. And I was like, oh yeah, good. It's dessert. Yay. <laughs> they go down the list. Nice. And it makes it so much more doable nice. to then nourish their bodies with those things that can, because I tell them whenever you put food in your body, you want to make sure that keeps your gut healthy. You want to make sure that it balances your insulin levels and keeps your glucose balanced. You want to make sure it's the most nutrient dense foods. And those are your vegetables or clean protein and healthy fats. And then I make it fun for the kids that every meal, they have to go down that list. And so if this nine, if this child comes with asthma, we really start with education and then providing them the tools that, you know what, I live this lifestyle. My children live this lifestyle. If we can do it, you can do it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what's the most important piece of the puzzle, that we actually live this lifestyle. Yeah, it's crit critically important for parents to talk to their kids about this. It demands that you're doing this yourself. You're working on it yep, together. It starts here. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It always starts Role here. Model. Mm -hmm. Mira has a question for kids that are dairy free. Is there a good source of calcium and is it is and is it causing my daughter to lose her baby teeth early before the age of five while all her friends still have their baby teeth intact? So many non dairy sources of calcium, right? So many to like it because especially if you start taking away those dairy sources, there's actually all like all your green vegetables, all your almonds, you know, your seeds and your sesame seeds. And like all of these real foods actually have so much calcium in them. Delicious. So you know, I was just, I was just talking to our friend, Dr. Stephen Masley yesterday yeah. and uh, his new book came out, The Mediterranean Method. Oh, and love it. We were talking about that and he said, you know, Tom, the evidence is pretty clear mm -hmm. that a few thousand years ago, our ancestors were eating 10 plus cups of greens a day. Greens. Mm -hmm. And that's where they got a lot of their calcium. Yep. Now, I want to take the concept of 
calcium and keep it in perspective mm -hmm. that our ancestors, the ratio of calcium to magnesium in the diet for our, for our ancestors, it's estimated that it was somewhere around four to one, four parts magnesium to one part calcium. That calcium in the diet is kind of rare. You know, it's not a prolific mineral in the foods that are on the planet. It never has been. It's only been the marketing of the dairy industry since the 1950s that made um, a whole generation, my generation, growing up believing milk is a natural and build strong bodies 12 ways and all of the gobbledygook that Madison Avenue put to this uh, concept of milk. And there was a lot of politics that happened in the 60s, early 60s, where a senior vice president of the Dairy Association became the head of the FDA, changed all of the requirements for calcium utilization within less than two years, doubled it, doubled it again, and then doubled it one more time so that a whole generation grew up believing that you have to have all this calcium every day. And then the guy retired and went back to the dairy industry. And that's what we're up against. So we all believe now that calcium is the most important mineral that we could ever get. And that's not how it is in nature. Nope. And if you look at our diseases, the number one cause of death is cardiovascular disease. And what is it? It's calcium in your artery. Yep. It's not cholesterol. Cholesterol is just the glue. But what's it gluing? It's gluing the calcium. Mm -hmm. All of the arthritis are calcium on your joints. Mm -hmm. You know, the lesions in your brain with a lot of neurological diseases that are called white matter lesions, they're calcium. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we, we've been misled into believing that calcium is a critical mineral for us. Now, Dr. What about Mira's question about uh, her daughter's losing her teeth before the age of five, her baby teeth? I mean, it could be before the age of five, the, I mean, we're just probably not getting the nutrients that we need. I mean, here, what, what happens is that our bodies, every single cell to even DNA repair to every function of the body needs these key minerals that we can get mostly from our food and when we're just not eating nutrient dense, when we're not eating these vegetables, these clean protein, these healthy fats, and we're just relying on processed carbs, which is basically the kid's menu, right? And that's what we think children should be eating. Then they're not getting the nutrition that they need. And especially with their vitamin D, their vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is so important to get calcium to deposit where it's supposed to deposit. Right. And by all these deficiencies are leading to a depositing in places that it shouldn't be depositing in. And so just the vitamin K2 that you can get from sauerkraut and from all of these, because it's ferment, you know, it's created in the gut, just by adding all of these really great nutrients from our diets to optimize gut balance and getting all these phytonutrients to help with that absorption of all those nutrients and minerals really starts with a whole plant-based diet that we need to now start incorporating in our children's lives. Agreed, agreed, fully agreed. And uh, my experience, I'm not a pediatrician, so um, I may not know enough about this, but kids start losing their baby teeth when their adult teeth are coming in. So if they're losing their baby teeth and there's just gaps there for months and no new teeth coming in, then some intervention may be required. Mm -hmm. And it may have been a nutrient insufficiency as you're talking about that set this up. So you've Absolutely. got to evaluate that child and see, um, um, is there any inflammatory mechanisms going on? Does a kid have heavy metals that have accumulated already? You know, so many things was, that could be going on. When I was 44, I was diagnosed with a cataract in one eye mm -hmm. and really unusual to have a cataract on one side only in a fairly young middle-aged man. And I was healthy as could be. I was doing lots of triathlons and scoring in the top 10% of the 30 to 35 year olds. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm healthy. You know, at 44, I'm healthy. 
And, but I got a cataract and where'd that come from? And the ophthalmologist couldn't tell me. Well, it just happens and no, it doesn't. It doesn't, you know, so I started researching and I found an article that talked about lead toxicity causing cataracts. Oh, I don't have lead toxicity. That's not it. Well, maybe I should check. I had the highest level of lead of any of the hundreds of heavy metal tests that I've ever done. The very highest level. Wow. And I looked at this and I said, what is this from? Oh, the first eight years of my life, we lived right across the river and one street over from the Rouge River Ford assembly line. The largest manufacturing assembly line for Ford in the United States was right across the river from where we lived in Detroit. And in the 1950s, I lived there for the first eight years of our life, my life, which meant I'm riding my bicycle around sucking all these fumes because there were no um, filters on the smokestacks in the 1950s. And I was inhaling all of that lead filled air and it stored in my body for almost 40 years. So you have to look and see when something's not working right, mm -hmm. what might the environmental triggers be that set this off? Absolutely. And that may be true, Mira, for your child, that there may be something because you know kids are born now with over 200 to 280 chemicals in their bloodstream that aren't supposed to be there. So, so many of our kids have not had the opportunity to develop fully and to have the, their God-given genetic right to grow up healthy and strong because they've been poisoned already. Absolutely. So these are symptoms that your body's, there's something off balance. That's your right. toxic load is increasing. So we got to start digging deeper and try to figure out what that is. That's right. Super That's important. Right. Olive Kaiser's watching. Hello, Olive. And Paula says Alaska's in the house. Hello, Paula. Yes, Olive. Yes. <laughs> in the house tonight. Yay! <laughs> That's really great. That is really great. So, um, Those are just super have, have your friends, parents asked you for advice on raising Absolutely. their kids, on feeding their kids? Has that happened? Absolutely. Because, you know, for me, um, I'm trying to create little leaders for the next generation. I'm doing the best that I possibly can. And actually, I think it started off with, um, I mean, that, that when this first started off, my first story of how my passion really developed with this was in residency. You know, I walked into my oldest child being almost suffocated to death by a daycare provider. And at that moment, I'm like, oh my God, the universe saved my child. So I promise I'm going to take care of these kids the best that I know how. But at this time, I was dealing with lupus and digestive issues and all of these chronic health conditions. And that's when I was started learning more and more about all of this and then came upon, across your summit. And I'm like, oh my God, there's an entire different world out here that we just don't know. But I started to incorporate this within my program. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take care of, and, and my mission still remained the same. I'm gonna take care of these kids the best that I know how. And I'm gonna create little leaders. So then I don't, they don't have to deal with what I dealt with. Yeah. And so the, I mean, my children, I mean, the way that I'm trying to raise them is on a functional medicine lifestyle world. We wake up every morning, we get 20 minutes of sunlight every morning. You know, we talk about gratitude. They drink lemon water on an empty stomach. You know, <laughs> we're trying to, all of those key pieces that I've learned from all these amazing experts, I'm trying to conduct a little chemical free experiment in my house and incorporating these things one by one. I mean, to the point where now, because they're eating, they're living this lifestyle, during their lunch hour, we're meditating, we're practicing mindfulness. Actually, we did uh, Emily Fletcher's course, you know, on, on mindfulness and meditation and the kids now can teach this and they're like, they're like educating other people on it. And what's really powerful is that when you put your children back into balance, they now are normal human beings that you can talk to. <laughs> they are, there's no temper tantrums. I mean, and there's, they, they're, they're having logical conversations with you. They understand what's going on with their bodies. And most importantly, they're able to help you out 
at home, right? Especially for us moms are like, any help that we can get, that's awesome. So before nine o'clock, my dishes are done. My laundry is done. My cleaning is done. The, I've done all the cooking because they have done all of it for me as in with together with zero arguments. So there's a, when my five-year-old is doing the mopping, my, the, my seven-year-old is doing the laundry, my la and it's all done before nine o'clock and now, and we already got our sunlight, we got our meditation, we've gotten our cleaning, we've, you know, one of them starts to, you know, like my nine-year-old now intermittent fasts, he only eats at lunch hour. And so it's really a lot of fun to talk to them about this. And then when they see that, then they're like, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> And I'm like, I'm not giving them food that is going to harm their body. I'm trying to keep the toxic load down. You know, we're, we're educating them. I'm having conversations with them. And that in of itself has been a huge like shift, especially for all my friends. They're like, oh my God, how are we going to get that done? How are we going to do that? And now they're educating others about this. Again, our healthy lifestyle, this healthy lifestyle that we're trying to live, they're detoxifying on a regular basis. They, they have their dry brushes, they do their Epsom salt baths, they're outside in the ground grounding, you know, they're hugging trees, you know, all of those things that we've been taught in functional medicine. Yes. I've been trying to incorporate in these children and it is, the it effects have been super powerful. Dr. Tom, it is so funny. When you have a seven-year-old wake up in the morning and Goes, mama, I think yesterday I had too much maybe fruit or whatever it was, or something was off balance because today I feel a little bit agitated. So I feel that my microbiome may be a little bit off or my hormones may be a little bit off. So this morning I would really like just to have sauerkraut for breakfast. It's just <laughs> so I can balance myself. When you have a seven-year-old come to you, and that's amazing. Where my five-year-old will be like, oh, oh, mama, my poop is like a little bit off-centered. So I must have eaten something yesterday. What can it be? And when you can teach your child to how to like, you know, as soon as they get off balance, these are signs and symptoms to recognize when they're when that toxic load may be increasing. And so now to shift it back and to analyze their day and to try to figure that all out. Yeah. It is powerful what these children can do. And then you're dealing with less temper tantrums. You're not, I mean, if they're worried about everything that they're putting in their mouth, what's the chance that they might be doing drugs? You know, and in my house, we are deathly afraid of red number 40 entering our house. You know, they're like, why would I want to put those chemicals in my body? Mama, why is it here? Why? Right. Oh my gut microbiome. <laughs> so even when they're out, when they're out in parties, I don't have to because I either you brain you wash your children one way or you brainwash your children another. And it's not really brainwash, it's educating them. You know, it so, makes me it makes me so think powerful. About, it makes me think about what's the role of a parent. Mm -hmm. You know, and a parent's role is to, in my opinion, to protect, of course, and to supply food, but also to educate. And that most of us, we've given that away and expect that the schools will educate our kids. Mm -hmm. And then when they come home, you know, we'll talk to them a little bit once in a while, you know, but they've got homework to do and all of that. So the parents, what you're modeling is being intimately involved on a daily basis mm -hmm. with the guiding your children and how to think. Now, Absolutely. a seven-year-old who feels a little off and a little anxious and decides, I'm just going to have a little sauerkraut for breakfast today, someone can say, you know, that's, that's brainwashing your kid. He's not getting enough nutrient. I can guarantee you this child is getting all the nutrient and more. All the nutrients that he needs. Right? And Absolutely. it may be when he's 10 and he wakes up in the morning, he'll have a whole different response to how he's going to take care of himself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not that the kid's doing sauerkraut for breakfast. It's that he's recognizing I feel imbalanced. And with what I've learned so far, this might be a good thing. Mom, what do you think? Mm -hmm. So what Absolutely. an ideal, ideal example of Absolutely. the next generation that we only can pray for. Yeah, and I'm, yes. I'm, 
I feel empowered by this and, and talking with you today because Mar uh, Marzi and I were uh, almost eight months now into our first pregnancy together. And it's so and exciting. It is, it is. And so uh, this reinforces uh, uh, what we're doing and what our plan Absolutely. Yeah, very much Absolutely. so. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it's so empowering as a parent when you see that it's not me doing any of the teaching. Like they're they're just recognizing this themselves that, oh, I'm off balance. This is what I'm going to try to do to put my body back into balance. And then I'm going to continue going as I am. Oh, I've seen. And it's so empowering as a parent and actually decreases some of the stress off of on me because I'm not always telling them. Yes. And now it's just intuition that is really guiding them. And that's what I want to do as a parent. And and to have these conversations with kids. And I think that we don't give kids enough credit. And I think that's what we need to start off. And that's what the, I really wanted to do with the book is that we can educate kids about, you know, all of these other complicated things besides for how food, food and our environment actually affects us. When we eat. It's a great place to start. And from there, they, they can expand and expand. Maggie asked the question, <laughs> How can I introduce this philosophy and practice to my daughter who is now starting a family? Well, Maggie, I would suggest as grandma, this is the first book you read to them. Absolutely. Right now, they're just starting a family, so that's a few years down the road. But in the meantime, you might send her the link to this interview, mm -hmm. you know, to just kind of plant a few seeds to think about how do you want to raise your child? What do you want your child thinking about? What kind of um, nutri not nutrient, what kind of foods do you want to put in your child's mouth? Do you read the labels on everything now that goes into your family's mouth? If not, why not? Well, I don't know. Great. One hour a week to start learning a little more about how to read labels. I mean, that's how you start all this, Maggie, is that you model it for your daughter and she'll model it for her kids, right? Um, my, my suggestion, Dr. Saeed, you have an addition to that? No, absolutely. It starts off, I mean, this is the best thing to do is to start off with yourself and to start educating. Have these conversations at dinner. Have yeah. these conversations every time when you're cooking together. Have your conversations when you're shopping together. You know, and here we're building that family structure, right? And on top of that, you're educating and empowering, not even yourself, but all future generations. Because if you're educated as a mom, then you're able to now pass this information down to your child. And that's what I've done, is every time I've learned anything from any of my heroes, including you, Dr. Tom, I immediately try to introduce it to my family. And so, and that's what I'm doing. So as long as moms start to educate themselves, spend that one hour a week to educate yourself, start with just food labels reading. And then figure out, oh my God, what's all this stuff? If you don't read, if you can't understand it, get rid of it. <laughs> right? Right, right. But just start with those simple basic steps one hour a week because that can really plant that seed. And when you plant that seed, it slowly continues to grow as you continue to water it. Amen. Amen to that. Jaina says, I can't redo my children. So I wanted to help my grandchildren, but it's hard to overstep my boundaries. What can I do? Buy the book. Buy the book. Read these books, this book to your grandchildren. And, you know, just actually, I'll let you answer from there. Well, what else can they do? Well, I really feel that, again, role modeling that behavior is the best thing. Yeah. As a grandma, if you're going to have treats at your house, like, for example, you know, when they go to the grandma's house, you're, you're, you're supposed to be, you know, spoiled by your grandma. So you can still have brownies there, but you can make them out of almond flour brownies. And you can have these slow and then you show them, oh, my gosh. And then when you role model this delicious behavior, and then, and then the kids see it and the mom sees it. And then you talk about it at the dinner table. I mean, that's what I do even when I whenever I'm even invited to some places, I love to cook. And it's a conversation starter. I take enough food for everybody. So I actually make my favorite brownies with almond flour and avocado oil and yes, you do. and yes, honey. You do. And I take it there. And it's a conversation starter. It's like, it's like, what are the benefits of all? But like, you know, they, these are so much healthier ingredients. You only need a little bit. You're satiated. And the more nutrient dense, the benefits of honey. So you go on and on about that. It's a conversation starter. 
but you can then start with your daughter and then her their grandkids and every time they come over here and when the kids start tasting the difference right now we have to recognize our kids taste buds are hijacked yeah <laughs> by the food industry and the sugar industry and all these things but when you start tasting real food again and that's what you can do as a grandma is to introduce these real foods to your children and your grandchildren because yeah. when you start to taste real food and then you taste artificial food you're like what what's going <laughs> on here right it becomes so, obvious after a it while comes after yep absolutely last question what about plastic containers that are bpa free well sharon we talked about that a little bit earlier um the, they've got bps and there's a couple of new bisphenols they're using uh bps and bpg i think it is that are more toxic than bpa it's just going to take a number of years before the general public learns about this and makes a scream and then they'll come up with something else but it's no safer it's absolutely no safer and in some studies they're more toxic right so they're out of there I well know. it's been uh, it's like a zoom zoom hour with you it just goes back. it's been so much fun dr Otao. it's been well, amazing everyone here please order the book now just get it done order the book and write a review when when you um uh, have a chance, you know, go back to Amazon and take a few moments to write a review. It's going to help dramatically. Yes, so much. And Dr. Lee, thank you so very much for being here. And thanks for all the hard work you're doing in the world. You're modeling something that no one else is modeling. You are the pioneer in this. And hopefully it's going to be the movement that transforms the world. Thank you so much. It all goes to you. Credit goes to you, Dr. Tom. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>